So I had to remake this video because it went on for about half an hour of me ranting, but essentially I'm going to condense it into my main points and takeaways. I feel that a lot of people in the magic community who are content creators, either they write articles, do podcasts, or make YouTube videos, whatever. When I compare it to what we had initially before the Patreon, when our biggest sponsor was the monthly magic box, which was being operated from jail, and everyone knew that it was being operated from jail. Yet people like Tolarian and Wedge still made the videos because it was the only sponsor they could have. I mean, I mean, I'll put it this way. If anyone gave them anything for free, they would have taken it. And if that so happened to be a scam monthly magic box, uh, yeah, let's take it because why not? All the YouTubers back then, they took the deal because what else is out there? So I, my gut feeling is a lot of YouTube channels are not actually fans of the game. And in my long rant, which I can summarize by saying that I get really angry in it, I have to calm down. I conclude that uh, the best examples I have is when the mana source, and not to pick on Wedge, but this is the best example. And I thought about a million ways that I could not include Wedge, but this is the best example. Uh, in seven months, he couldn't get a patron of his, his uh, who paid $10 a month, $70, a signed bulk card. And he says many times that it's delayed, he's getting tracking, he's getting tracking, oh, it's on my desk. So if someone has never got gotten tracking before or sent a card via tracking, they don't know the tracking is on a receipt. And this is actually very clear when you read the text messages. Wedge doesn't realize that there, if he did send it with tracking, the tracking is not just on the envelope, it's also on the receipt. And that's very interesting, right? And the reason I use that example is because if someone is making a deck tech and their, quote, deck tech is exactly like MTG GoFist or Magic Pro, that person probably doesn't play Magic. Because if you did play Magic at a local game store, assuming that you don't buy all your cards from Walmart, Wedge, you would know that your local game store, not everyone is playing ideal decks. This could be mainly because of finances. This could be because of supply. And there's so many reasons that when you go to a local game store, it does not represent a GP. People playing janky decks, and that's what people like to play. It's casual. So if you've never been to a local game store, you don't know that. So to you, you're reading articles about the top deck with the four Teffies that are like 45 bucks a piece, and it's like all souped up. And you're like, wow, this is a great deck. But in real life, probably no one has that optimal deck unless they are at a GP with more money at stake. If you're just an f and you have to be a real troll to spend that type of money for the quote optimal deck. And even then, the optimal deck won't be optimal depending on the meta game. So, and lastly, MTG Finance, when people are... So if I told you what video is going to get more views, a MTG Finance on Standard, Modern, or Reserve List, by far the reserve list would get the fewest views because people are, they don't own those cards. Do you own that random pirate that went from five cents to $5? No, you don't because that random pirate is on a reserve list and it was from a set that the majority of magic players never played in. The magic players normally just have standard cards. So they're only interested in standard cards and their price, but if you understand MTG Finance, I'll take Lyra as an example, a real life example. I bought 16 copies of Lyra. I kept four of copies of her. I think the average was around $13, maybe less. She went up to $27.25, which allowed me to buy list her for around $20. Now there's tracking and there's shipping. And there's also, uh, you have to find a vendor. Luckily, there's one local to me in Scarsdale 
that a lot of MTG finance people don't like. I, I've always dealt with them and they're always very nice to me. And I sold it and I made probably a $2 per Lyra. So that's 12. So I made $24 on one of my quote best speculations. And that's Lyra, right? That's Lyra going from $13 to 28 or 20. You're not, you're never going to get what that card is worth. So when I see all these videos about investing into standard booster boxes and standard cards and modern cards or, you know, like it's very strange to me because it's people making the videos who have never done it before. They've never ordered 200 Falias. They don't know that that vendor from Puerto Rico, you shouldn't order from them because it's always going to be delayed because it's not their fault. They don't know about customs. Sometimes your cards get caught in customs depending on where you order them from. So a lot of the things are very on the surface because it's from people who have never done it before. So the Deck Tech Wedge makes gets a few hundred thousand views and he doesn't have a local game store and he lives at, with his parents at home in this basement. So I'm not saying anything bad about that, but I'm saying he doesn't have anyone to play Magic with. Right? He, he doesn't have anyone to play Magic with and I would love for him to prove me wrong, make a video of him going to a game store. I don't know him with his friend playing magic. I don't think he plays magic, but he makes all these deck techs. And when I look at the crowd, when I look at all these content creators now, you know, it's, uh, there's like a content creator podcast. I like his podcast, but every blanking, the podcast is only 20 minutes. And for the first five minutes, he just advertises. And then for the last five minutes, he advertises. Like, literally every podcast today is just advertisement all the blanking time. And it's like, okay, I get it. You want Patreon money. I get it. I get it. I get it. But before, but this kind of encourages people to make popular videos, but not have strong opinions. Very bland videos. Um, and the reason the videos are so bland is because it's easier to be neutral. It's easier to make a deck tech video. It's super easy for you to go on MTG GoFest, make a deck tech video, put some cards in a green screen, and then you're good to go. You've never played a deck. You don't know how it actually works. You just uh, read the article by Saffron Olive, and that's and that's great. Um, and this is the same thing with the Hall of Fame. It's, it's very shallow. So Weds... I, I hate to keep using him as an example, but since I have done some research on him recently, I, I have to, and he's the best example, but he is a example. There are thousands of wedges out there. Wedge says that he is qualified to vote for the Hall of Fame. Wedge has never played at a GP. I mean, Wedge, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he's never played at a GP. He, when he went to the Community Cup, he lost every single game. And I think they gave him like one game just as a pity. But literally the guy lost every single game against the super casual community cap member. These are super casual members. Like we're not talking about like top eight John Finkel. Oh, okay. Wedge lost to John Finkel. That's fine. We're talking about people who are super casual themselves. He couldn't win a game. Oh, he was playing against R&D. So like even worse, like. Even R and D doesn't even know anything. Like, they, God, they're, they're just terrible. But anyway, before I go on another rampaging rant, um, so his opinion on why he's qualified to vote for a Hall of Fame member, although he ha himself has never covered the Hall uh, Pro, he's never covered Pro Magic play. He's never covered cheating. He's never covered covered stealing. He's never covered anything of controversy which the Hall of Fame is now about, is that he has watched a few videos of the Pro Tour. <laughs> My gosh. So I think I can summarize the major issues of Magic in that simple sentence that someone who's determining uh, maybe someone's even livelihood. I mean, that's why they fight so hard, right? Because they really want that extra $300, I guess. But they're determining someone's livelihood and or fame career builder, I guess, 
has never played at a GP, has never played at a pro tour level. And when he has played against publicly, he's lost. It's clear that he doesn't know how to play Magic because he doesn't have a local game store. I mean, is there a better example than this? Where someone is pretending that they are something they are not. Uh, but the data will show that... I, I mean, here, I mean, this is my collection. These are boxes and boxes I've opened. I have all the bulk. I, I, I can show you hundreds of those pirate bulks if you want. And I think eventually we'll get to a place where you have to be real. Otherwise, it just comes off really bad. Anyway, and then once the donations will eventually run dry, then what happens? Bye.